Hey everyone, and also those who are watching other social media sites, hope you are doing very good for yourself, having a wonderful year so far. What I have here, just purchased this the other day. Don't worry about, in this case, I'm going to open this up and let you see it up close and also a comparison to a penny. In my mind, you know, when I first heard the story, I really thought that it was just maybe a penny or like a, you know, a, a small copper coin. But uh, it's true. It actually is a small coin, what the scripture says. But uh, again, don't worry about it. I'm going to open this up and let you see it. Uh, I'm going to be reading from Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. And same comparison with the scriptures um, the book of Luke chapter 21 verses 1 through 4 they both talk about the same story um, the widow's offering or the widow's two mites and this is exactly what it is here so all right stay tuned Jesus was inside the temple at a specific area known as the Court of Women. In other references, it was also called the Middle Court. Inside the Holy Temple, Jesus was sitting at the opposite side of where other people, crowds of people, was just putting offerings in a donation area, like a Department of Finances, the Temple Treasury. As he was just observing everybody, the entire crowd, what caught his attention and even told his disciples to look at this poor widow who only put in two small coins known as the mite. And the value of those coins was so low. He told his disciples, look at this. This woman has given everything she has. She's given more than she's given more than anybody else here. Now, Jesus wasn't speaking on an economical level, on a, on, not on a financial level. Everybody else there was wealthy. They was given out of their wealth. But she literally gave everything she has. Donated it to the temple, to the house of God. You know, I was thinking that what people overlook as it not being important, God sees it as something incredible. Now, although you can't really see it, I'm gonna definitely give you a really, really closer look. But um, they were known as lepton. But since she gave two, as far as the widow, they're known as quadrants. Now, in the, in the book of Mark, when it speaks about um, it is worth a farthing, that farthing is the same as quadrants. And there has been a lot of debates concerning that fatherings is, or quadrants really means quarter. But to, to not take the text out of context, in actuality, she gave all that she has. She only gave a little. So whether if it was just something that was worth only two cents or if it was worth 25 cents, it was what she gave from the heart. Even though she didn't have much, she didn't make much, Jesus knew that she was poor and a widow. Therefore, she really didn't have any sort of support but what she did give was just two of these. And even though economically speaking, financially she didn't make much, but yet she did give something to contribute to the, to the temple. The two dominant symbols 
that are found on the coin are an anchor and a star with eight rays. Occasionally, Greek lettering is seen on these coins around the anchor illustrating the prevalence of Greek culture influence that was evidenced during the reign of King Janaeus. The mites, or what others will call lepton, they were actually the smallest denomination of a coin. Like they were like the bottom of the value. Like they were kind of like what we consider lower than a penny, apparently. And this was struck during the reign of a Hasmonean king. His name was Alexander Janus or Janus. And he reigned from the year 103 BC to 76 BC. Now if you want to read more about Alexander, there are two major sources, historical sources, that is in the book of the Antiquity of the Jews and a book called the Jewish War. That the author of those books is from a first century historian named Flavius Josephus. And I must include that out of the non-biblical texts, he is actually the one of the main ones that people look towards to and finding more about Jesus and Christianity. She was in a place called the Court of Women inside the temple. The Court of Women was only for women and also for men as well that was it was a place where they can it was still part of worship but they were giving offerings we're going to get a little bit deep into that discussion but in hebrew that court of women it is called ezrat hanashim known as a court of women and i'm just still looking at this like this is so historical like how small it is, it really has a lot of meaning to it. The name was given to the 13 brazen or bronze chest called trumpets, literally called in the Talmud trumpets. The Talmud appendix, plan of the temple. From the form of the opening into which the offering of the temple worshippers put in for charitable contributions were placed, these stood in the area known as the Court of Women or the Middle Court. Thirteen wooden boxes with trumpet-shaped funnels to guide the coins into the box were placed near the colonnades of the Court of Women. This area was the actual treasury. The sound these coins made against the metal would have indicated how much people offered to the temple. Of these nine offering chest trumpets were for the legal payment of the worshippers, and four were for free will gifts. Trumpets number one and two were for the half shekel tribute. Trumpets three and four were respectfully for the money paid by women for the offering of turtle doves and young pigeons. Trumpet 5 receive offerings for the wood of the altar. Trumpet 6 receive offerings for incense. Trumpet 7 receive offerings for golden vessels of service. Trumpet 8 receive what remain over out of a predetermined sum from the purchase of a sin offering. Trumpet 9 receive whatever remain over after the purchase of a trespass offering. Trumpet 10, receive whatever remain over after the offering of birds. Trumpet 11, receive whatever remained over from the offering of the Nazarite. Trumpet 12, receive whatever remain over from the offering of the cleansed leopard. And Trumpet 13, received free will gifts. You know, in the scripture, it tells us that God loves a cheerful giver. And even though she couldn't give as much as she really wanted, 
what Jesus seen was that she offered all. She offered everything that she has to the funding of the temple and to taking care of the Levites and the things that is in the house of God. That was her main concern. I mean, someone that was living in poverty, that didn't have the support, yet she was still able to make do and to just please God with what she has, even though it's a little. And yet, by him observing everybody else, she caught Jesus' attention without her even noticing it. And she was just doing her part. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon.